whilst I was upsizing. Now a couple of the bolts I'm not happy with, they're a little bit sort of uh, skewy. I'm going to admit defeat that I was incorrectly reading these drawings. Um, Sonics have sort of said that, just try to look at one drawing at a time. I know. Stabilators and rotovators. Um, starting on these two components of the build now. Um, what can I say? Uh, Going to be a little bit sort of uh, different to the conventional aeroplane. Um, hence the moving away from the horizontal stabilator to the Y tail or V tail. Um, more appropriate probably the Y tail, hence Y X. Um, terminology uh, the can't really see too many issues with it at this stage although there probably will be um, dreading making a mistake but anyway have confidence um, I guess I will sort of uh, just quickly show you or just turn the round and I'll quickly go through a couple of things on the drawing okay this is a little bit of a plan view of the um, right hand uh, stabilator just showing a sort of a, a spar detail here uh, and if I sort of go back to a, another drawing which I think is in this direction um, yeah there it is showing the aft end of the of the build uh, this is the prominent uh, Y uh, tail or Y X as it's termed um, three spars by the looks of things. We've got uh, a main sort of a spar here, a secondary spar, and then some sort of a little plate um, that attaches to the two of those spars and back into the aft end of the aeroplane um, around the tail wheel section uh, on this detail here. I'll probably go through those more in detail as I build. Um, but I can't sort of see too many issues. I think that camera's too close. Let's go back a bit. There you go. How's that? Sorry about that. But uh, yeah, that's um, the gist of it. There's a couple of little uh, details on here that have to be noted. There's a couple of little um, flush rivets on this end because the spar, the rear spar goes back against this other spar of the stabilator on the Ford spar looks like it's all riveted through that way. Uh, a couple of little AN bolts up here which attach around this section over here. I think they term these hockey sticks. I've heard that name before. Anyway, I think that is it. And I might uh, start and dry fit the um, stabilators together. Talk to you soon. Bring one of those over. There it is there. Um, this sort of fits on the Ford side of the Ford spar and on the aft spar here there's a one that gets its predominant or, or a spar that gets its predominant Y shape and I've just dry assembled that over here um because i just wanted to get my head around just take that over to here um just wanted to get my head around how it all fitted together i wasn't quite understanding um how it all fitted together to the fuselage you'll just actually see the last very last rib of the fuselage there um this here i'll just put that down there this section here is the last rib uh, i might go to another drawing actually over here just here here's another really good detail um, of it all here so this rib is just sitting in here and you can actually see the layers of the spars uh, being one two and a little tail post spar that fits into here. It's all bolted together. It's all integrated with the uh, fuselage. I mean, I just, I've only got two clamps on this thing here. 
um, and I can just feel the rigidity of it already. It's um, it's quite strong. Well, it's very strong. It's got to take a lot of impact load, I guess, from the tail wheel if you do some bodgy landings. But um, hey, we all do them. So I'm just going to um, just basically dry fit all this together. I've just drawn. I've just written myself some notes. Um, in particular, one of the notes that I had. I had a little little bit of a difficulty in trying to locate the exact location of this on the drawing. It really um, didn't. It wasn't too clear. Um, and I and I look. I I, I think in anyone's defense and, and in particular sonics's defense it, it it there's got to be some things there that you know you've just got to use i'm not going to use the word initiative i'm going to say that you have to just look forward into other drawings and that sort of stuff and and the best it, it, even though all of these ribs and the like have pilot holes in them for the for the skins and and everything something wasn't gelling um, had some pilot holes through here, but nothing through the back side of this. There's the, the top side of that, which holds another rib. So these these screws, uh, sorry, these holes through here aren't shown on a drawing. But what does make sense is that I got the skins out just to have a quick look. And obviously, one thing that I wasn't thinking about was these need to line up. So by simply lining that up and moving that in and out, it automatically gives you a... Um, a position for that to be then drilled through. Now, what I will say, though, if I just turn this around, is that this does have some pilot holes in the back side here. And what I did was, and I'll just... Well, I'll explain it. So what I did was I, I just drew a centre line, a centre line down the back of this, which was halfway between... Um, where I was going to basically halfway between that dict I will actually take it off I'll just stop for a second I'll just I think it's going so what I've done is I've just drawn you can actually see like a center line down here now I've just taken for I'm gonna say granted that it's gonna be somewhere in the, in the center of that so once I align these holes with that and I look through there it did actually it did actually line up with that so you can actually you can't actually quite see but it did it was just another reference a reference you know it wasn't as if it was sort of five mil in either direction of that line it was fairly close to it so i'm happy with that so i always write myself down a few notes um on here so a couple of these things that i'll be starting first up is just fit these little angles uh the w uh, i x t 11 6 r and six lefts which are these little things here. Now, most of this horizontal stabil uh, stabilator is, is all um, piloted. Okay, I've drilled these two parts of the spar. Um, we can see the Clicos are in spot. They're already pre-drilled on both these two. It's a little bit more secure. Um, I've aligned, obviously, these through both top side and underside so i'm going to now commit to bending the old hockey sticks here's a drawing up here of it it's 78 degrees across up uh, that's the one there's the opposite side um, and it's a bend of uh, 20 degrees up i've just initially uh, just done my little protractor here at 20 degrees um, and then I will do it with the inclometer inclometer never ever gonna get that word right but anyway the leveling device um, and what I've done is I've just drawn the center line through obviously through here which is corresponds with that I've got my um, solid piece of inch steel uh, for a half inch radius bend and I've just put a couple of little sort of packers in here to stop it from wobbling when I place it in the press press down which obviously the spar will go down this will bend up and hopefully it works I'll come back in a second
I think what I'm going to do now is um, basically take these two hockey sticks up into the bench drill um, and drill all these holes through the small laser cut hole just to elongate them to uh, silver clicos or uh, 332s um, and um, then come and dry fit it to the Ford spars. Okay, I have uh, pretty much completed the two uh, stabilator um, assemblies. Uh, I've got the Ford spars on both sides. I've dry assembled uh, just with a few clicos to hold it together and also bent the uh, rear uh, spars which fit into this side. I have upsized the first three rows of rivets on these first three inner ribs uh, and countersunk because the spar obviously fits flush against this face and it doesn't involve uh, when when the sort of the two spars are the rear spar and the rear uh, spar of the the white tail section uh, fix against this uh, it doesn't require the ribs to have a rivet all the way through so these are all a different style of rivet uh, through there so both sides are done I'm um, just looking from the front uh, pretty much uh, pretty much all done through there I mentioned before about putting the bolts in through that section just to, to hold those little ribs on that corner um, I'll obviously have to uh, pull all those apart and you know clean up all the surfaces prime and, and do whatever and a final uh, deburring of any of the spa material um, and that's about it for today I'll talk with you later Okay, I have um, silver clear code all of the the rear spar and um, tail um, post uh, in position, which in itself is a spar uh, against the rear spars of the horizontal stabilators. Here's the two stabilators here and here. And the dilemma I have is this, because I just want to, um, well I believe I should be fitting the skin at some stage and if I, well okay I'll rephrase that, I have to sit, fit the skin and upsize these holes from silver to, to copper clicos. Now by doing that, if I assemble all of this and assemble this, I can't do that. Well, I can if I leave this front spars in, but by putting the rear spars in, I can't because these ribs that are that are dimpled on the first three locations are dimpled from the underside of the spar here. That means you can't align these ribs uh, by assembling all of this as in a, uh, a copper clico situation. So if I remove this spar, well, first of all, I will upsize all these rivets all the way through here and inadvertently upsize them into this rib, that rib, and, and well, actually on this one here is on the end of the spar anyway, just there. If I upsize all this, deburr it, take it all apart, and then fit this to this by holding clicos in, I should then be able to fit the skin on it, just to double check the whole alignment. Now if you look at this drawing here, it probably is clear if you see that, because this is built with the Ford spar on, not the rear spar, so you basically building two of these and I can't really see it being an issue if I now disassemble these structural spar elements off the rear spar of the stabilator fit it to this having effectively two independent stabilators I believe that's the way to go that way I can dry fit the skins to each of these while this is sort of Clear code just to be double sure 
that things line up with the skin. I'm I'm concerned, you know, that, um, well, I'm not concerned. I think the kits are brilliant, but it's just a, a, a way of, of triple checking, I guess, if you, if you will. I can't see it having a problem, but I will do it anyway. So I'm going to upsize all these holes, copper all the way through, upsize all those holes through that size, take it apart, Disassemble between the two spars, well three spars actually, because there's this spar and then the two spar elements here. Disassemble it all, fit the skins, and see what it looks like. I will come back to you when I... Okay, I've uh, silver clicoed all of the right stabilator now. Um, fitted all the uh, nose ribs around through here. Um, had to take this on and off a couple of times because I put a reference line because uh, well basically these ribs aren't drilled and I put a reference line down the center with some texture and when you sort of look down through the pilot holes of the skin they weren't aligning up so I basically had to sort of take all this undo all these bolts pull it out you know uh, make sure the reference line was in the center put it back together again uh, eventually I got it so all good and I can now I'm starting to run out of clicos as you can see I've got um, bits and pieces everywhere the other side is all done I've had to rob a number of clicos off uh, off the spar on that side as you can see um, I'll now upsize it and um, Bob is your uncle. Stable later is now all upsized with uh, copper clicos, um, both uh, top side and bottom side. Just lift that up for you. There it is. All done. Now this is the top side of the uh, stable later. I've left these section out with silver because I've got to put the hinge uh, under here so I'll use these as I'll, I'll pile it through these.